Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Have you ever been in a situation when you were soldering components and the power went out? It was a really bad experience. This is the video for you. In my hands, I have a powerful soldering station that can be used with batteries, power up to 200 watt, input voltage from 10 volt to 24 volts. The circuit has the function of automatically increasing voltage when the voltage is low. Here is the circuit after I finished it. The circuit has the input power wires, the output connection port to the soldering iron, the temperature regulator, and the circuit status lights. The bottom of the circuit is tinned to withstand high currents. This is important if you want the circuit to work stably. Now I will apply power to the circuit to see how it works. When power is supplied to the circuit, a status light will light up, indicating that the circuit is powered. I will use a VOM meter to see the voltage when the circuit is operating. The input voltage of the circuit is currently 11.2 volts. So what is the output voltage of the circuit? The output voltage of the circuit is 24.4 volts. You can change this voltage if you want. Most soldering irons use 24 volts. Some high-powered soldering irons use 36 volts or 48 volts. To give you a better idea of how the booster circuit works, I'll hook it up to an oscilloscope. Then we can see the pulses and frequency of the circuit. An oscilloscope is a device I think you should have. It will be very useful when you make boost, buck, SMPS circuits. Through the oscilloscope, you can see that the circuit is operating at a frequency of about 43 kilohertz. The small pulses are the circuit adjusting to balance the output voltage. When there is a load, these pulses will change. Now I will connect the soldering iron. You can see how the pulses will change. When I connect the soldering iron, the amplitude of the pulses becomes larger. On the heating indicator circuit is on. When the soldering iron temperature is equal to the set temperature value, the heat indicator will flash. I'll increase the temperature of the soldering iron a little bit by adjusting the potentiometer. It takes about 10 seconds to heat the soldering iron to ready state. The heat indicator is flashing. The circuit is working fine. The tin melts easily. I think you will like this circuit. I will explain the working principle and show you how to make a circuit after an introduction to my partner JLCPCB. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB is the full-service electronic manufacturer. JLCPCB's innovative one-stop service model makes production highly efficient by tightly integrating EDA software, PCB fabrication, parts purchase, stencil cutting, and SMT assembly. 1 to 8 layer PCB from $2, lead time as fast as 24 hours, strict quality control, and trusted by 5.4 million customers worldwide. $80 new customer coupons, upload Gerber files to get PCB with high quality and low price. This is the result after one week of ordering from JLCPCB. The circuit looks very nice and sturdy. I have attached the files in the description, you can download it. This is a T12 soldering iron, it has only two pins to contact the power source. So what is the structure of the soldering iron? Where are the heater pins and the sensor pins? I will do an experiment for you to see. I will supply a power source to the two pins on this soldering tip. There is smoke rising, which shows that the soldering tip is being heated very hot. Next, I will use AVOM meter and measure the voltage of these two pins. We see that there is a voltage appearing. This value is decreasing and the temperature of the soldering tip is also decreasing. I apply a power source to these two pins again. The heat rises a lot. 
and the voltage on these two pins is also high and starts to decrease. Thus, these two pins are both heater pins and temperature sensor pins. This is the internal structure of the T12 soldering iron. The heater and thermocouple are connected in series. In terms of temperature control principle, we will heat the soldering tip, then turn off the heating and read the feedback voltage value from the thermocouple. If it is lower than the set value, we will continue to heat. If it is higher, we will stop heating. This is the schematic diagram of the voltage boost circuit. The circuit uses UC385 to regulate the voltage. This is a popular IC used in many power circuits. Components such as inductors, MOSFET and diodes are combined together. Through the control of UC385, the voltage will be raised to 20 for volts. 0.1 ohm 5 watt resistor used to protect MOSFET. When current exceeds 10 amps, you see 3845 will stop working to protect MOSFET. This is the schematic diagram of the temperature control circuit. The circuit uses OPAM LM3244 amplification and comparison. The output signal controls a P channel MOSFET to adjust the soldering tip temperature. This is the circuit after I soldered some basic components such as resistors and capacitors. The capacitance value of the capacitors is about 1000 off. The voltage is higher than the current voltage. The inductor you can use the output filter coil from the ATX power supply or make a coil from the ferrite core E to 5. The inductance value is about 10 to 100. The circuit works normally. There are no special requirements for this inductor. This is the E25 core. You can use 1 mm diameter enameled wire. Wrap 15 turns around the core. The ferrite core pillar will be ground about 2 mm to create an air gap. This helps the circuit operate stably. And here is the result. I just showed you how to make a soldering station using battery power. Thank you for watching the video. Wishing you success. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.